so we'll be performing scans to find the open ports we'll be enumerating using scripts we'll be exploiting the vulnerabilities using metasploit framework and we'll be understanding the post modules and we'll uh, use the post module to route the traffic of our uh, target machine right so these are the things that we are going to discuss and let's quickly start with the first thing port scanning right now great so when when i'm saying that this port is open that means a service is running on that port or the service is using that port if i'm saying port is closed it means that no service is using that port or no service is running on that port right so when we talk about port scanning port scanning is fundamental step in cybersecurity assessments and it helps you to identify the ports on a target machine or network that are actively accepting connections which allows you to uh, find out which services or applications are running and whether they might be vulnerable to attacks or not right now when we are talking about port scanning so there is a tool that's widely used in port scanning and that's with the name nmap so when we talk about nmap nmap is a scanning tool and it stands for network mapper and when we are talking about nmap right it is a tool which will help you to find out open ports services running the operating system of the target machine and it will also help you to enumerate the services or enumerate the information right so you can directly communicate with the target machine and do the enumeration you can find out if it is vulnerable to any well-known exploit or if it is vulnerable to any well-known vulnerability right so what we have to do we have to understand the working of nmap right so let me tell you about the working of nmap now when we talk about scanning scanning happens in three steps the very first step is check whether the host is live or not right now what does that mean check whether the host is live or not it means that we have to find out whether your target machine is reachable or not now when i'm saying if whether it is reachable or not so when i'm saying ping ping is used to check the reachability of the host right so if i open my command prompt and if i write ping google.com so as you can see it is replying back so if i'm saying like packets sent three received three zero percent packet loss right that means we are able to reach google google is up and running now in this ping if i'm asking you that where this ping is reaching that if you are pinging any domain or any ip address right where it is reaching who's replying back when i'm just pinging google so if i'm able to reach to the server of the uh, of let's say any domain name that means i will be able to hack it right so what happens the very first thing that arrives right or very first thing that you encounter is the firewall right so that's the enterprise firewall which basically replies back to you right now ping is one way can i use tracert or which we call trace route in linux yes so i can write the command tracert and then i can write the domain name let's say google.com so can you see it gave you all the hops that your packet traveled 
right and if it is reaching to your target that means google so that means google is up and running so from this also we can find out that if the target is up and running or not right now everyone is on their devices i'm dropping name of a domain right now check if you are able to reach that domain if you are able to find out if it is up and running or not so if i'm writing this so it says request timed out that means that for security purpose what they have done they have disabled the icmp they are not accepting the icmp packets because ping uses the protocol icmp and that's not allowed in their network right for that what we can do if icmp is uh, disabled in any network what can be done so there is a tool in kali linux which arrives and its name is hping3 right so when we are talking about hping3 what exactly it is hping3 is a packet crafting tool right packet crafting means that you can craft your own packets and you can specify your own protocols that which protocols packet you want to send right here i have written hping3 hyphen a elm dot sa this is a tcp packet which will be sent and if you see you are able to ping it says six packets transmitted six packets received zero percent packet loss yes so that is what that is your h ping three four packets transmitted four packets received that's the tcp packet which we are sending that's a web application a website which we are pinging right so that's other way of finding out that if the target is up and running or not now the thing is See, the ping only uses ICMP protocol. It will send echo request and echo reply will be there, right? But when we talk about HPing3, you can use, you can send TCP packets, use UDP packets, ICMP packets. So that's a tool where you can use different types of protocols. That's the difference. Perfect. Now, let's say there is a machine right there is an operating system which i have now this operate i want to find out if uh, like these are you can assume that uh, two computers away from each other but in the same network not very far away but uh, in two different rooms now i want to find out if uh, i want to hack that uh, computer and i would just want to find out if it is up and running or not how can i find that out if it is up and running or not Now, when we are talking about address resolution protocol, this is the protocol which is used to find out or resolve the IP address to MAC address, right? And how it works. So basically what it does, let's say there are three devices in the same network, A, B, and C, right? Device A wants to send some data to device C, right? The IP of device B is let's say 192.168.11.12, right? For C, it's 192.168.11.11, right? So what happens when we are looking at these things, right? When we are looking at uh, these devices so a like osi model basic networking says that whenever you are sending some data so that data uh, should be having the ip address of the target machine and also the mac address of the target machine right now a knows the ip address of the target machine 
because they are all in the same network right me being a user of a i am accessing a i don't know the ip but a my device knows the ip of the target machine now what i will do device a will send a broadcast message what is broadcast perfect so broadcast means that i am sending the message to all the devices in the network so this broadcast will be a message and in that message what will be written that anyone having the ip 192.168.11.11 .11, reply me back with your mac address now when this packet when this message will reach device b device b will say no this is not my uh, ip address written in the message so it will drop it and when c will receive this message c will say yes this is the this is my ip which is written in the message uh, so let's reply back and c will reply back directly to a that will be a unicast and in that reply c will be giving its own mac address yes so that's how address resolution protocol works now we can take the advantage of this address resolution protocol and what we can do we can basically first scan the whole subnet right first i will find out the subnet what is subnet so subnet is what that you have a big part of network and a small you are breaking that uh, big network into smaller parts right that's your subnet now when we are talking about the subnet so we have to find it out i will use the command if config it gave me my own ip address now my target machine is also in the same network and my uh, my machine uh, in the same in my network right basically so what will happen it will basically check the whole subnet my subnet is starting from 192.168.12.0 so i will use the command arp scan i will give my subnet right and the subnet mask that is slash 24 now when i press enter i can see that it's giving me an output and in the output we can see there are four ips now out of these four ips how can i find out which one is the ip of my target machine now the thing is that when we are talking about uh, this arp scan right it gave me four ips so these four I, out of these four ips one of the ip is of my uh, target machine right now uh, what happens basically dot 254 that you see dot 254 is the ip which is broadcast ip so that means if you want to send some data to all the devices in the network of vmware like we are inside a virtual network right so if you want to send some data to uh, all the devices of vmware then you will use this 254 right so that's your broadcast right then dot one dot one is the virtual ip given to windows that's how vmware identifies the windows machine right my base windows it depends uh, mr rv that uh, what is the last ip you have given so when i have uh, configured the network so there i have given the last ip is 254 i have not given 255 as the last ip so that's why 254 will be the broadcast right if you even open the settings of your router if you go to the on uh, like your ip or your gateway ip so you will see the last ip written is 254 i have given the range 192.168.12.128 till 192.168.12.254 this is what i have given the starting ip and the last ip so that's why 254 will be the broadcast it will pick the last ip as the broadcast 
the subnet is slash 24 but you can modify that what ips will be given by the dhcp server in vmware right that's why it's broadcast ip we don't have to calculate this right we can uh, modify the dhcp server so in the dhcp server you can just give the information that what starting ip and what ending ip you want i can even uh, put 192.168.12.253 as the ending ip address right so that's why it is giving 254 as the broadcast ip and then dot two that dot two is acting as a gateway right so these are the three ips dot one is your windows dot 254 is your broadcast and dot two is your uh, gateway so we are left with only one ip and that is the ip of your target machine and that is one of the way by which you can find out that if your target machine is up and running or not right so app scan then we can also use nmap for it right so we'll see how nmap works next second step is find open ports right and find services running right so when we are talking about find open ports and find services running so open ports are found using nmap right and services running are also found using nmap so what is this nmap we have to understand the nmap right nmap stands for network mapper right and it is a scanning tool right so we have to understand the working of nmap so there are five steps in which nmap works first it does is ping sweep right then it does dns lookup right then it also does reverse dns lookup right if needed then it finds open ports and then it runs nse right now when we talk about nse nse stands for nmap scripting engine right now nmap scripting engine means that it has nmap has a database right let me show you these are the scripts which are present in the database of nmap right now these scripts are related to different services like ssl ssh smtp smb uh, rmi real vnc pop3 nfs mysql mssql right http you will see a lot of things now what it will do it basically either gives you information general information about the target so let's say if i'm running uh, http hyphen title for any of the application right any web application right so it will be giving me the title of the web application or if i'm running a script let's say this one http1 cv2006 3392 so it will be giving you the information about uh, if the target http version is vulnerable to this exploit or not so that information it will be giving you scripts are just uh, the like these are the piece of code which are written to find out more information so you can run these scripts against the target according to the version and it will be giving you the information that uh, if the target is vulnerable or general information about the target application right or the target device right now 
as i said that uh, nmap works in five steps the, so the very first step is ping sweep the ping sweep ping sweep means that it will ping the ips right in the whole subnet and will find out that whether which ip is up and running right in app scan we are sending our packets but here what we are doing we are sending the packets right ping packets icmp packets yes clear so rather than using app scan can we use ping sweep yes perfect so how we can use that let me show you we can write nmap hyphen sn for ping sweep and you can give your subnet 192.168.12.0 slash 24 for me and this is the output so here is dot one dot two dot one three two that's the ip of your target machine dot two five four and dot one fifty so nmap gives the ip of your own kali linux system also now the next thing when we are talking about nmap so we should know some of the switches that we use with nmap right what are those switches so we have hyphen v so hyphen v is used for verbosity right so that means it will tell you the uh, information it will give you in more detail and you can increase the level of verbosity to till level 3 so you can write hyphen v hyphen double v and hyphen triple v right then hyphen pn right hyphen pn is used to block ping sweep now why we want to block the ping sweep because the thing is that when I have already done ARP scan, right? So again, if I'll do nmap and nmap will perform the ping sweep, so it will increase the number of packets in the target and maybe I'll be detected, right? So that's why we want to block the ping sweep. Also, I don't want to perform the uh, reverse DNS lookup, right? If I have given an IP address, I don't want to find the domain name associated with it, right? So for that, you will use the option hyphen N to block DNS lookup, right? Then if I want to find out open ports, so I have the option hyphen P where you can specify a port, right? Or port range. So ping, after blocking ping sweep, ping sweep will not happen. My scan will be running properly, but ping sweep will not happen. It will consider the target machine as up. It will not check. Right? So you can use hyphen P to specify a port or a port range. So you can either write hyphen P 23 or you can write hyphen P 23 comma uh, 24 comma 25 or you can even give a range hyphen p 23 to 50 let's say so it will scan the port number 23 to 50 right then you can also use the option hyphen p hyphen hyphen p hyphen means scan all 65535 ports nmap does not scan port number 0 port number 0 is a reserved port but it will scan uh, all the 65535 ports starting from port number 1 right and then it will give you that how many ports are open 
then after finding open ports i want to run the scripts so i'll use hyphen sc what it will do it will basically run default scripts right as per the protocol so whatever protocol or whatever open port is there it will just do what it will run the default scripts for that right picking from the nmap database right then hyphen sv hyphen sv is for service version right service version means the protocol which is running whether that uh, what version of that protocol is running like http is running so what version of http is running if uh, ftp is running what version of ftp is running it will find that right then there is an option hyphen f right hyphen f is known as fast scan fast scan means it will scan 100 well known ports i'm not saying that it will scan from port number 1 to 100 it will scan 100 well known ports then you can also use the option hyphen o if you want to find out the operating system right then if i give you a list of ip addresses let's say i'm giving you 100 ip addresses so out will you do the scan or will you run the script for all the 100 uh, ip addresses will you run the uh, like command 100 times no right we won't be running the command 100 times So what we'll be doing, I will be basically using the option hyphen IL, right? Scans the list of IP addresses. So what I will do, I will put all the 100 IP addresses in a text file and then I will be running the nmap using the option hyphen IL and specify the name of the text file and done. It will automatically pick up uh, the IP addresses from the text file and keep on scanning. Then you can also use the option hyphen OX if you want to save the output in XML format. Right? So these are some of the options that you should know. There are many options. So if you want to explore all the options of Nmap, you can directly go to the manual of it. So for manual, you will just write man and the name of the Nmap. It will give you the description and the scans and all the options that can be used within Nmap. Right? Now, the next thing is that if I want to run nmap, so what will be our command, right? So first thing, up scan I'll do, I'll just check the IP of the target machine, it's 132 for me. And then I'll write nmap hyphen v hyphen n hyphen pn hyphen sv hyphen sc hyphen p hyphen hyphen v for verbosity hyphen n for blocking DNS lookup, hyphen PN for blocking ping sweep, hyphen SV for finding out service version, hyphen SC for running the default scripts, and hyphen P hyphen to scan all 65535 ports. Now, when I did the scan, let me do it again. Let me save the output in any XML file. Right, I'm saving the output of uh, nmap in an XML file, which is apt.xml. Now, let's see how many ports are open. It found a lots of open ports. 30. So, it says scanning 30 services. So, that means 30 open ports are there. Let's wait for it to give you the whole output.
now this is all cli without colors and uh, the person who is seeing this output first time uh, might not understand everything what's written like even like it's because it's cli right so that's why we saved this uh, file in xml format uh, let me convert that file to HTML format. And do LS and use Firefox to open it. Firefox apt dot HTML. Now, here you can see the output. Let me increase the font here. So the thing is that when we are talking about nmap, so we this is the command that we have executed, and now here it's giving you the outputs, right? Now the output says port number is 21 TCP, right? It's open, right? Service running is FTP, and what the reason why uh, it told that the port is open? It's VSFTPD. And the version is 2.3.4 right and then the switch that you use hyphen sc that switch is here right the output of that switch ftp hyphen syst so it executed a script with the name ftp hyphen syst and this is the output ftp server status connected to this ip logged in as ftp type as sky right everything it's giving you then second script for FTP it executed is FTP hyphen anon. So it gave the output an anonymous FTP login allowed. Yes. Now the thing is that if I want to do the uh, if I want to hack the target machine and get inside that machine. So through FTP let's say. Right. So I'm not getting a huge amount of information here. Right. Which will help me do do like the hacking of the target machine right so for that what we'll do we'll do the enumeration right enumeration means that you are gathering detailed information about the target system or network like user account services or any vulnerabilities or system configurations everything right so what I will be using, I will be using scripts, right? Same scripts of nmap, which we already saw. Now, let's see how we can execute those scripts. First, as we know that my pro the target protocol for me is FTP. So I'll do what I'll write locate nmap slash scripts and out of those scripts, just give me the scripts related to FTP. Right. So these are all the scripts related to FTP. Now, can you see any script which looks like that it, this script might help us out? This script might give us a good amount of information. If you check the output of nmap, nmap also tells that the target machine is having VSFTPD. If, uh, the, the version of FTP is VSFTPD. Right, that is running. FTP hyphen NN is already executed by NMAP and it gives you the output that anonymous FTP login allowed. That means you can log into the FTP server as the user anonymous. Right, so if I write FTP and the IP of the target machine 192.168.12.132. So you can give the name as anonymous and it says login successful, right? But when I do LS here, 
it will not show me anything it won't give me any output right so that's why we'll exit from here and we will execute the script ftp hyphen vsftpd backdoor dot nac in the target machine yes so what to do let's run the script and map hyphen to p21 port number 21 hyphen hyphen script and give the name of the script and then the ip address of the target machine 192.168.12.132 yeah the same output will be there anonymous ftp login allowed when you will run this ftp hyphen nn that will be the output Now, if you see, I executed the script and the script uh, says port number 21 TCP open FTP, FTP hyphen VSFTBD backdoor. Uh, and it says the state is vulnerable and it is exploitable. Right. And after that, it shows this exploit results that once you exploit the vulnerability or once you have compromised uh, the system, then if you will run the shell command is ID. Right. If you will run that shell command ID so what will happen it will basically give you the output as uid 0 gid 0 that means your root so user id and group id if your user id and group id is 0 in linux yesterday also i told you that if your user id and group id is 0 in linux then that means you are a root user otherwise you are a normal user yes so it says it is vulnerable and it is exploitable right now the thing is that if it is vulnerable or if it is exploitable so how can we exploit it do we have to go to any web website or web application to find the exploit code or do we have to write our own exploit code so when we are talking about exploiting the vulnerability we have a framework which goes by the name metasploit framework right metasploit framework is a very famous framework among pen testers and among uh, attackers also and this framework like right now version 6 is going on right but the first two versions of uh, Metasploit framework were in different languages and there were very less exploits available and then uh, in the third version when uh, Metasploit's third version came so third version was written in Ruby language So and uh, like Metasploit framework is now uh, like it's taken care by the organization rapid 7 Right and what they basically do rapid 7 they keep on updating the exploits and all the other piece of codes whenever you update your or upgrade your system or operating system so these scripts will also be updated or upgraded or new scripts will be added right so for starting the metasploit framework what you do you write the command msf console and press enter Now the Metasploit framework has started and you are inside that Metasploit framework. Right. Now if we see that there are some modules inside Metasploit framework, right? These are the names of all those modules, whatever things are present inside it. Right. So what we have, we have 2437 exploits. What are exploits? exploits are the piece of code that you will use to take advantage of a vulnerability right so if you have found a vulnerability you will find the exploit code you will run it against the target machine and it will be exploited right 
then we have auxiliary so there are a, there are 1255 auxiliaries now what auxiliaries do they will basically uh, what we say you help you in enumeration so let's say you have a list of usernames and list of password 100 usernames and 100 passwords in that list of 100 usernames and 100 passwords what you will do you will basically uh, like if you try manually there will be 10,000 combinations right so rather than you using it or you trying it you will search for any auxiliary so let's say I'm searching for the auxiliary SSH underscore login right now this is the auxiliary you will use this auxiliary give the list of usernames and password to this auxiliary and this auxiliary will try those username and password in the target machine and then it will tell you that which username and password combination is working right that's your auxiliary right after auxiliaries we have uh, post right now post means that once the compromise is done you have compromised the system right you are inside the system after that what to do maybe uh, you landed into a system like you are hacking an organization and you are uh, you landed into a system which is basically uh, like of a receptionist let's say right right and that receptionist does not have lots of privileges in the network so you have to move to some uh, critical devices or critical servers right so for that what to do after the compromise that will be post right those are post modules clear now when we talk about payloads in the terms of networking so payload means whatever any data or whatever data you are sending that's a payload right but when we talk about payloads in terms of uh, let's say hacking right so here the payload is something which tells what to do once the exploit is done right after the compromise what to do right so let's say this is my device right and this is the victim device so I found a vulnerability so I sent an exploit code to the target machine so the target machine like uh, using that vulnerability uh, I just uh, like entered inside the system so after entering entering means my uh, I was able to send the exploit code and then with the exploit code you will also send the payload so payload will tell that what to do how there will be a connection between the attackers machine and the victim machine so payload will go and execute itself inside the target machine and it will ask the target machine to connect back to the attacking machine right so it can be a trojan also which will open a backdoor in the inside the system it can be a code of uh, uh, like which will be giving reverse shell access or direct shell access of the target machine so exploiting the vulnerability is one thing but after exploiting the vulnerability payload is the one who will help you to take the access of the system right then next thing that we have is encoders right so if I'm sending a payload let's say my payload uh, is a Trojan right when your payload is a Trojan and if I'm sending that payload to your device let's say your Windows machine will your Windows Defender detect it and stop that payload to enter your system correct so that's why what we do we basically use the encoders right to encode the payload so that it bypasses the security uh, measures in between whatever security measures are uh, we have taken right 
so we have a very famous encoder with with the name shikata ganai right so shikata ganai is a uh, encoder which will encode your payloads and then give it to you so that it can uh, bypass the security defenses then next thing that we have is nops nop stands for no operations no operations means that it will do nothing now why we need something uh, like this which does nothing so whenever we are doing uh, the attacks like memory based attacks like buffer overflow we are doing so at that time for uh, like for a period of time we want that nothing should happen right at that time we use no operation these knobs so they act as a padding or you okay, for filling the space right uh, we use no operations right now after knobs we have evasion right so these are the scripts that will be helping you to bypass the security defenses like IDS, IPS, firewalls, antiviruses in between, right? So those will be bypassed using these nine scripts, right? So these are the modules of Nmap. Now, uh, uh, whenever we are searching for something in Metasploit framework, so we use the module or we use the command search, right? Now I want to search for the exploit of VSFTPD. So I will write search VSFTPD and the type I'll give as exploit. Okay, so now you can see that it gave me the exploit code. This is the exploit code. I want to pick up this code. So for that, you can write use space the full name of the exploit code, or you can also write use space the index number. Right, which is written I'm just going with the full name and now you can see that the exploit code has been picked up now once the exploit code is picked up now you have to tell for whom you are executing this exploit code so you will write show options here right and show options you will see something with the name our host our host stands for remote host and this is the target host Right, that means the IP of the target machine and how to put that value will write set our host and the IP of the target machine dot twelve dot one three two. Once it is done, you will exploit the vulnerability. So I'll write exploit and it says backdoor service has been spawned handling UID zero GID zero root found shell and command shell session one open. You are inside the target machine. If I write ls command, so it will show me anything. If I write id, it will show me uid0, gid0. If I write who am I command, it shows that you are root. So I hacked inside the target machine and became a root user of that machine. Yeah, it runs uh, the exploit code to have uh, access on the target machine. So that's a script or you can say a piece of code. Um, so Daniel, yes, uh, like no, it's not possible from uh, like to switch from the shell session using uh, to meterpreter session because uh, the thing is that uh, when we are talking about meterpreter session, so meterpreter is a payload. So we have to send the payload as meterpreter. Here we have not sent uh, meterpreter as the payload. Our payload was the default payload CMD Unix and track so it we cannot switch it to uh, what we say the meterpreter session now you have the access of the target machine you can do whatever you want you can try every single thing inside it right now in this what we saw that we were able to uh, get the access of the machine right and when we were able to get the access of the machine we didn't set any payload 
we haven't right but let's say there is another another port through which i want to take the access of the machine so let's say i pick up port number let's say triple six seven now in triple six seven there is a script uh, the service running irc and uh, the service version is unreal ircd right so what i will do i'll directly search unreal ircd and the type i will give is exploit right so it gave me the exploit for unreal ircd right now i will this exploit right and then i'll write show options once i have written the show options so we have our host now what our host is uh, our host is the ip of the target machine so you will set that also set our host as 192.168.12.132 for me and then exploit and it says exploit failed a payload has not been selected so you have to select the payload as well right and for selecting the payload you will write show payloads right now when we are writing show payloads it gave me 12 payloads and out of all these payloads first one is add user i don't want to add any user to the target machine some of the payloads you will see have ip version 6 written in them so we are not talking over ip uh, ip version 6 right we are not uh, using ip version 6 then uh, there are some scripts related to ssl so we are not uh, talking over ssl right so we'll remove those scripts also now there is reverse ruby reverse pearl uh, uh, payload cmd unix reverse and then there is bind underscore ruby bind underscore pearl right so i will choose this payload And I'll write set payload and the path of the payload. So payload has been set CMD Unix bind Perl. Now let's do the exploit. So it says command shell session two opened. Right? You are inside the target machine and you also got to know how to set up payload now there are other ports also open search vnc great so for vnc i got uh, 156 outputs out of all these which one will work for us uh there are two command injection and remote code execution for excellent and 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 this is great but yeah only two excellent so out of those two which one to use so it's legend bot exec uh, legend pearl irc bot remote code execution so it maybe it's a kind of bot where this vulnerability can be exploited so how could i know that there is a bot So what I will do, I will search for VNC protocol 3.3, right? So for that, it gave me an auxiliary. So this auxiliary will not give me the access of the machine, but it will find some information. And what this auxiliary is about, it's about VNC authentication scanner. So when we talk about VNC authentication scanner, right? what happens let's see so i'll pick up this code this 
auxiliary code and I'll write show options right that what are the things I have to give so you can give a user file you can give a username and password file or you can directly give the username right and you can give the our host right that we will give password and there is a password file like it has a uh, list of words right which a word list where lots of passwords are there and it will try those passwords right so here I will be setting the our host only our host 192.168.12.132 right and run this auxiliary now when I ran it it says login successful and the password is password okay now once we have found the password what I will do sudo su golly and then VNC viewer the IP of the target machine and then the password and you can you are inside the target machine you have the remote access now you can run any command you can do anything inside it the vulnerabilities are exploited in the same way yes uh, it's root you can see the username root see the user root So that's how you hack into a machine right now the next thing is that we have post modules right so you have to understand the post modules also very uh, that's like a very nice thing right so Post modules are used after a system has been compromised and these modules they allow you to interact with the exploited system further to extract valuable information or uh, escalate the control over the environment. Right. So when we are talking about this post module, what we have, let me power on a machine. Okay, so we have a machine. I have a target machine. I'll just quickly find the IP of that machine. Right now, in that, uh, let's find out the open ports. So it's 22 and 80 only. Okay. So this is a very uh, very long machine, but uh, let me show you that how and where we will be using the post modules. So I'll start the Metasploit framework. It's already there. Now in this Metasploit framework, what I will search. So let's say you found the username and password of this machine. So I'll search for SSH underscore login. Right. And I'll pick up this auxiliary. Right. Use zero. Right. Now here you have to set the R host because you know you have to give the R host the target for which you are running. Right, then you have set the username. I've set the username, set password as password one, and then exploit. Now, this auxiliary it will tell you if the username and password combination if it worked or not. Right. It is not telling you that uh, it's not giving you the access of that target machine. Right. But when it tried this username and password in that with the target machine. So with target machine, it might have uh, created some, let's say. 
some kind of uh, session will be created right so if you check if you write the command session so you will see a session between my Kali Linux machine and the target machine is there right so what I will do sessions hyphen u one right now hyphen u is used for upgrading the session right because the session which is running this cannot give me the access of the target machine i'm upgrading the session and i'm uh, sending a payload to the target basically okay sorry right so it's updating this uh, it's executing post module shell to interpreter and it's uh, it will be basically sending the payload and giving me the access of the target machine right by upgrading the session right so it says interpreter session 4 open right if i write the command sessions again so i can see there is a fourth session started interpreter session right so for connecting to that we'll write sessions hyphen i for interaction and session number so it gave me the interpreter session right now when it gave me the session what i did i used if config to find the interfaces the ip addresses now in this what i found that there is an interface docker 0 interface number 3 and it has an ip address which is private right internal ip address it is right so you cannot access this ip address from outside so what we will do we will use post module so the session which is running i'll press ctrl z it says background session 4 yes and enter right so if you will see sessions the session is all uh, with the target machine is already running in the back end right then I'll go back and search for auto route right and this is a post module right now what this auto route does the auto route will create a new host to connect with whose traffic will be redirected to the internal services but the problem is that auto route does not tell us the IP of the new host so it's creating a new host and that host will be communicating with the IP of that docker which is running right and it that uh, host will be basically sending the information to us and to the that docker basically right that's what it will be doing now here you just have to write set session 2 that for session 2 we are gonna run it and run sorry session number four right and run and it executed so it gave me route added to subnet this from host routing table now it created a host and it gave the ip to that host and we have to find out that which one is that right so for that we have to do the ping sweep right and for that i will search ping sweep now when i search for ping sweep i can see there is a post module so use zero right set session four right set our host as 172.17.0.0/24 right and then run it so it says host found now when we checked so docker 0 was having the ip 172.17.0.1 so this is the docker right so the new host which it 
created is this 172.17.0.2 now whatever operations i want to do on this i can do that right so let's say search port scan so there is an auxiliary port scan slash tcp right so if i write use 5 right and set our host as 172.17.0.2 and set the port limit as uh, 1 to 100 right so 100 ports and then exploit so it found port number 21 open so that's how you can use the post modules to perform the task even after the compromise. Thank you so much for uh, joining.